Hello my fellow admins and welcome to my first episode of uh, Scriptrunner Guides. Void.admin here and in this video I'll show you what is Scriptrunner for Jira and how to uh, start learning it. So let's start. So this video is more directed to the beginner uh, users of uh, Scriptrunner. So if you started to hear about Scriptrunner plugin and how powerful it is uh, to customize everything in Jira, you are right. Like every rumors that uh, Scriptrunner is the most powerful plugin uh, to use uh, for Jira customization is true. Like you can change everything in within uh, Jira. Uh, you can change workflows. You can change how the screens uh, or the custom fields are looking or how are behaving. You have multiple uh, use cases here, but uh, in this video, uh, first of all, we'll start how to install uh, script runner for Jira. And afterwards, uh, I will show you how you can start learning and with what section uh, from uh, script runner features you can start in order to learn uh, the groovy scripting in order to customize Jira. So in order to use uh, script runner for Jira plugin, you need to install it. So what we need to go now and uh, search for it and we can go to uh, Google and just type script runner for Jira and it goes in the marketplace of Atlassian and we can click on this and here uh, you will see that you have multiple options cloud server or data center. I'm using uh, for my local, I'm using a data center uh, uh, version so I will choose data center I, I just go into the version section and you can see all 128 data center versions so here you can choose to download your own version like I suggest uh, using the latest version of script runner uh, which is like tested and uh, deployed with the latest features so now I will choose uh, uh, this for data center so in this section of uh, version history you can also see the cloud and uh, the cloud and the server versions but you can choose data center or whatever you are using so we'll click on uh, the data center the latest version here and you can see that it's 6.49 so we'll download this it goes into our downloads and now you can install it so we have it there and now we can go in the Jira, administra Jira administration si sections uh, and you can choose manage apps and from this uh, if you have this uh, Atlassian marketplace for Jira uh, enabled you'll see like this uh, section where you can use this section in order to install uh, plugins from a marketplace but uh, you, we just use the the marketplace directly from Google so you need to go in the manage apps section and here you will have the section where you can upload the app so we leave it to um, to load so we have here the user installed apps so we click on upload app and now we browse and we go in downloads and you'll see groovy runner 6.49.0 jar so we need to install this so now uh, in order to see what uh, options and features have script, uh, script runner has we can go in the browse section of script runner so you can see it here in the left side of uh, this menu so here you can see everything that this uh, plugin has like it has a lot of options here it also adds uh, custom jqls to your uh, uh, to your uh, environment and also you have this section where you can add uh, groovy scripts in order to customize everything that you wish on Jira. So if you want to start learning how to use script runner and to start lighter with the groovy scripts and uh, you don't want to go in complicated and advanced things, I will suggest you start using behaviors uh, section of uh, script runner. This is what I used when I first started. I started to look for any behaviors that are like pretty easy to understand. I tried to use like any documentations online. Actually, this uh, this plugin has a very nice documentation and also it has examples for every section of uh, of uh, script runner plugin. But I will show you uh, what behaviors are and we'll start uh, creating our first uh, line of code so I can uh, 
start explaining uh, how to change some uh, some custom field uh, behaviors on some screens. So basically behaviors are used for any screens inside your project. So if you're trying to create uh, an issue, a new window will appear. So if I'm going in a uh, Scrum project, if I uh, create an issue, I will just press create button and a new window will appear. So basically uh, behaviors works uh, work only on uh, new windows or uh, existing windows so for example if you are creating an issue a new window will appear you can use behaviors in order to change something related to custom fields or to any behaviors of uh, any system field that is present on a, on a screen so you have a screen for the create issue you have a screen for edit issue uh, you have a screen if you go into a transition um, from workflow so on a workflow you can add a screen in order to uh, if you go into the progress or to done section and you just press uh, done from uh, from the workflow button you can configure to for uh, you can configure that a new screen will appear so basically behaviors works on screen only so uh, I will start with this in order to show you what you can customize uh, with, uh, with the behaviors. So today we'll start with a simple behavior that uh, makes our placeholder single field, which is uh, the type of text field, but it's a custom field. So we want to make this uh, on, uh, on the screen uh, mandatory. So you can see here this uh, red star it, uh, it says to us that this uh, field is mandatory so you cannot create the issue without adding a value to that, to that field. So let's say that we have um, a behavior that makes this, uh, this uh, placeholder single as mandatory and uh, let's say that on... Uh, and also let's choose the issue type. So we want to customize uh, on a specific thing. So maybe you don't want this, uh, this custom field to, to be mandatory on all issue types. You want to have this uh, custom field mandatory only on Epic. And also on, uh, on Epic level, we can make uh, this multi-line text field hidden. So we can uh, hide this, uh, this, uh, this uh, multi-line text field for uh, this specific uh, Epic here. So, um, we now uh, can go in the behavior section. So here we are, we are in the behavior section and you have this create behavior button. So in order to create a behavior, you need to click on this button. So if we click it, we have this new window. We need to type a name here. So let's say uh, uh, beginner guide. And you can also add a description, testing um, uh, custom field behavior. So here we also besides the name and the description, you can also add a mapping. So uh, previously I said that we want to make uh, that uh, placeholder uh, custom field mandatory and the other, the multi-line, make it hidden, but only for Epic. So we need to add a mapping for this. So in order to do this, we just create a mapping. So this, uh, op this, these uh, additional options will, uh, will appear. So we can select a project. So let's say that we want uh, this behavior to work only the uh, Scrum base project that I have here. And we don't want to have it on all issue types. So you can uh, customize it to, uh, to see it only on Epic level. So we can choose this. Uh, you can also hard code it from the, um, with the Groovy script, but you have this option in the UI. So why not using it? It's, it's easier. So now you can add the mapping. So you can see here the project is Scrum base uh, issue and uh, it's epic and we can remove it if we want to. And we just hit create and you will see that it creates the behavior. So now it's not saved. You need to add the save button in order to save it. So whatever uh, uh, customization you are doing on a specific behavior uh, in order to use it, you need to click on this save in order to be saved. It doesn't save it. Uh, automatically so you can see here in the mapping we have the scrum base and the issue type epic and we have the mapping so here the next uh, thing that I want to show you we can uh, actually uh, hide and make a, um, a custom field 
mandatory or we can hit, uh, hide that, uh, that field using this section. So we can add this placeholder single from here. And if we add it, it will create a behavior for this specific field. So let's see, let's say that we want to make this required. So this is mandatory. We can click on this button and actually it will make our, um, our custom field mandatory. And also we have the option to hide it. So uh, in behaviors, you also have a new UI option, but I will want to show you the code version that it's easier. Uh, like I will try to explain in, uh, in an easier fashion in order for you to understand. But if you don't want to use code, you can use the, uh, the UI option. But let's say that you have a task that you need to hide or make a field mandatory based on another field. So you cannot use the UI anymore. You need to hard code it in a Groovy script. So let's save this and uh, just show you how it looks like uh, if we're using the UI of the behavior. So now if I'm trying to create an issue, you will see that placeholder single is now mandatory. It's required. You cannot uh, create the, the issue without uh, adding a value here. So now I will just try to uh, show you how to uh, how to do this using uh, a groovy script a simple groovy script which is easier to understand i'll try to explain it uh, in an easier fashion so we don't need this field anymore as we can use the initializer so you can delete this so here you will see that we have the server side script it's not based on a specific field so we can create a script using this section so you will see here that we have this section i will actually uh, uh, and disable this dark mode, which is super annoying because sometimes it it not it doesn't help you in uh, some situation makes it uh, worse as you uh, as you could saw that uh, I was I was seeing just a white panel here and it's not looking good and sorry for the for this light mode but it's easier for here to understand the UI. So here, uh, here we have this initial initializer, which is a server side uh, console in order to add the script. So we want to make placeholder. Um, let me refresh this and just show you. We want to make this placeholder single mandatory. It's mandatory because we, um, let's save it and just show you that it's not mandatory without uh, uh, using the behavior so now it's not mandatory we want to, to make it mandatory to make it required and we want to uh, hide this multi-line text field so now let's go here and I'll start explaining uh, we need first in this console to uh, define these custom fields so basically you uh, you can define these custom fields using uh, the name or uh, the ID so in order to do so we need to define it so uh, there is um, def uh, a def uh, like a definition in order to uh, to define this uh, this custom field so we'll start with uh, defining we need to uh, to search for this custom field um, placeholder single so we'll just say def which adds a definition and here in this definition we need to uh, to add something specific so i'll say just place holder which uh, defines the placeholder for that specific uh, that this specific field so now we need to get it right so this placeholder can be anything that you want so this text here can be also x xr or i don't know uh, y or anything that you want it doesn't matter what you add here because you will use this specific text in order to make this uh, this field mandatory or required using a, a boolean value so here we just um, i just i usually type something that can be readable by uh, other person so if other persons are looking at your code you don't want to have like a bunch of x's or y's or z's or whatever you want you you need to specify what this field is right so we have here placeholder so we know this is the placeholder custom field so here in order to get this custom field we need to get it like we have like an option that it's get so which is super nice that in the latest version of script runner we have this uh loop like it's it's something that it's super useful for uh, for the console of script runner 
previous in the previous versions we didn't have this and we just needed to click control and space from the keyboard in order to get this uh, this nice layout where you can have these options in order to uh, make uh, to make your uh, your behavior so now we we have options in order to choose so if we type get it gets like an automatic uh, uh, window where you can have multiple options so what we need here we can use the get field by id in order to get this field or we need we need to uh, get it by name so i usually like getting a field by name like you don't want to have duplicate um duplicate custom fields name in order like it, it could be so confusing uh to have like uh, duplicate uh, custom field names but if you have uh, duplicate custom fields name in your uh, jira environment you could use uh the get field by id which is the custom field uh, dash and the custom field number but we'll do the in the both in both ways in order for you to to understand so here we get this placeholder uh, custom field by name so we uh, use this uh, function get field by name and in within this uh, this parenthesis we need to uh, to add a string what is a string is a it's a type of uh, you can add multiple car characters here but a string is defined by uh, this uh, two commas or you can also use the the single commas here it's also uh, this is also a string so if you are not familiar with uh, any uh, programming language uh, you have strings you have integers so basically an in integer is a number so if you, if i'm using zero this is an integer but here it requires a string also it says us to uh, it says to us that we need a string here so i'll use double commas here and you can see that the um, the error disappears so the error says that okay this is a string but we need to type here the string so what we need here we need the name of this placeholder custom field and we can have this name here from the from the create issue or you can uh, choose it from uh, from the custom field section so you can copy this and just place it here and as you can see now we defined the placeholder uh, custom field so we gave us uh, a name for this uh, for this definite for this custom field and we get the field by name using the name of the custom field and now we have this placeholder uh, field in this uh, console of uh, behavior script runner so now we want to make this uh, mandatory and in order to do so we just start a new line so in a new line we just need to get this uh, object to make it required so we gave it uh, we gave it a name we defined it a name for this uh, 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 custom field and now we what we need to do is to make it uh, required using a boolean value so what how we will do this we just type placeholder so placeholder is what we defined here so this is a field and now we just type dot and now you have a multiple section where you can convert we can um, do a form value or anything else but we need to set it required so this is an option if you don't set it mandatory mandatory is like a, a word in order to see that uh, uh, red star and we need to make it uh, required so there is a function here set which sets the um, the custom field and we have required so as you can see uh, i'm typing some uh, some letters and basically this help text it's helping us go to the strict value that we need so here is set required so we have it and you say as you can see uh, when we got the get field by name uh, it says that in uh, between parentheses we have a string there but here we have a boolean value and i'll explain what a boolean value is so here we need to add a boolean value a boolean value is basically true or false so this set required for us it, it needs to be true or it needs to be false in order to have a boolean value but we need to be true in order to set this uh, placeholder custom field required so we just place a dot which uh, incentivize that we need this uh, custom field to have a specific uh, uh, 
uh, modification here and we need to set it required set required is basically this star that we had it uh, from the ui section of this behavior so now we have this we have a placeholder which is our custom field that we define it and we need to set it required and now we save it and if we go now back and we just refresh it you'll see that uh, on the creation placeholder single custom field it's uh, mandatory voila we have it and this is like a beginner how to use this in order to uh, to set this required and also what we need uh, we wanted to do on the uh, in the beginning of the video i said that we also want to do and to add uh, this multi-line text field set hidden so basically we want to to hide it but first uh, we need to know that we need to define every field that we are using on behaviors so now let's just add a new line and just do a definition for the multi-line so we have the multi-line uh, custom field and let's use in this place not uh, get field by name but but uh, get field by id so we have this option here so uh, for your jira environment if you have multiple custom fields that have the same name it's better to use the custom field id so the custom field id also requires a string so we need a string again but here we don't place the name of the custom field but the custom field id so for this we need to search for this custom field id and in order to do so we need, you need to search for this custom field so the custom field is uh, it was multi-line text so now we go in this section of multi-line text field and we click on edit so in this edit you will see that this custom field has an id you can see it here in the top level of the uh, browser link and you will see that this is 10403 so we copy this and in the um, in the behavior we'll just type custom field because it's a custom field right and we need to add a dash in order to add this id so uh, uh, the id is identifying uh, is identified by the id of the custom field so you need to type the custom field and now the id that we identified from the uh, edit version of that field so it's 10403 so we have this multi-line uh, get field by id it's not by name but it's is basically the same thing it you can either get it by id or get it by name i like to use it by name because it's more intuitive for for other person uh, to see that you are using by name and he, uh, he or she does uh, does know that what uh, what this uh, field it, it is like if you see this custom field id you don't know what type of uh, what name of uh, this field is and you need to search it by this and you need to i don't know change this id here and see what ever that uh, custom field is and it's uh, for example if you have multiple jira versions and you have like uh, not versions environments if you are uh, not using like a copy of the production maybe you don't have the same custom fields id so maybe you created something on the test and when you uh, change it manually for production that custom field doesn't have the same id and this could be problematic in the in a behavior if you're trying to do custom field and you get field by id which is this uh, custom field id so that's why I'm, uh, i like to use the, the name here so we got uh, this multi-line and what we need to do here is to set it uh, as uh, uh, hidden so we just type this uh, multi-line here as you can see it uh, it requires the uh, it it identifies the form field that we just defined it uh, on the line two and now we just do the same thing and set but it's not required it's hidden and if we want to hide a, a custom field we just use this uh, this form field uh, set hidden which is the same uh, which has the same boolean value so you need to add true or false to this so we just uh, choose set hidden and now we just add uh, a true value because we want to hide this uh, custom field so as you can see multi-line we set to hidden true and we just click on save and now if we go in the project you will see that for epic of course so you can see that we have epic placeholder single is uh, required and below you cannot see 
uh, the multi-line text field anymore because it's hidden and if we change the issue type task for example as you can see the placeholder single is not required because we uh, we mapped that behavior to this specific issue type which is uh, epic and not uh, not task and if we change the issue type that behavior is not running anymore in the background so for task placeholder single is still here as uh, non uh, required and if we scroll down we can see the multi text line field here so um, this is it this is what I can show you uh, in order to understand like as a beginner if you are not familiar with any type of uh, languages or any type of uh, of groovy uh, scripting uh, this is what I can show you that it's easier to understand uh, in the future I will also uh, add some videos which are with, in, within the, the advanced uh, uh, users in order to to understand them but uh, this is how you do some things uh, with the console of, uh, of script runner with groovy in order to change uh, to customize something on uh, on jira so yeah this is what i wanted to show you for this video i hope it was helpful i hope it's uh, it's an open path for you in order to start learning if you want to go in this uh, jira administrator path and uh, you, I, I will tell you that uh, script runner usually for a Jira administrator is uh, kind of not mandatory, but it's very useful for a, for a job. So if you want to do this, like I, uh, I advise you to go on uh, on uh, script runner documentation, try to find any uh, any templates there. You can use also my templates from GitHub, and I will also post uh, documentation for Groovy in the description. Maybe it will help you to, uh, if you want to start learning. And that was it. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, being here with me. If you like this video, if you learned something here, just uh, hit the like button. You can also comment for helping the algorithm. And if you enjoy this type of content, just uh, hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot and uh, it mot motivates me in order to, uh, to create more content for you guys, in order to create more guides and yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, I shall see you next time and uh, peace.